But the problem with this is, is 15 degrees a cross at a coordinate point on the unit circle that you are familiar with? No. no. So if I asked you to evaluate on a test, the first inclination would not be to use your unit circle, but would be to be um, to grab out your calculator, right? And however, the problem with the calculator is it's going to give you a it's going to give you approximate value. It's going to give you a decimal, and then you're going to have to round it. And if that's what happens on a test, and they say, "Hey, round to the nearest hundredth," then yeah, plug in your calculator and round to the nearest hundredth. However, there's another way that we ask is um, in our text we ask for the exact value. So to find the exact value, we're going to use the formulas. So. Um, there's only, if you guys remember in the unit circle, there's only so many angles we have. Right? We have 30, 45, 60, and 90. Right? And you guys could do radians as well. Um, so what I want to do, if you guys look at those, these are called the sum and difference angles. You can only do the sum and difference angles um, you can only find the exact, you can use these formulas. Well, you can use these formulas for anything. But to find these exact value that we're going to be doing in this class, you're only going to be able to do that for angles, for the sum and difference of the angles that we know on the unit circle. If not, you'd be approximating as well, and it'd just be faster to use your calculator. So can I rewrite 15 degrees as the sum or difference of any of these two angles that we do know? Yep, you could do what? 45 and 30. So I could rewrite this as sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Would you guys agree with me? Yes. yes. OK. So that is a difference of two angles. OK? So if you guys look at that, you can see my variables I use is u and v. Here is u. Here is v. So the way that works is it looks like this. Just, no, it doesn't really matter. So the sine formula for sine of u plus v, so it's not plus or minus, but when you do plus, then you do the top sign. So it's plus and plus. If you guys look at cosine, you do plus and then minus, or minus and then plus. Does that make sense? So for the sine formula, it's u plus or minus v. So if it's u plus v, then the formula, you're going to do the top sign as well, plus and plus. See how cosine it goes, see? You either do plus minus or minus plus. Plus plus, minus minus. Plus plus, minus, minus minus plus. So it depends on what the formula is. So we have sine of u minus v equals what do I have? Sine of u times the cosine of v plus cosine of u. No, wait, this is minus, right? Minus, minus. Minus cosine of u times the sine of v. That's the formula that's given to you. The hardest part is, one, finding the formula that is given to, and then two would be to um, using the algebra, which we'll get to next. So now we've identified u, we've identified v. All we do is plug them in. Ooh, this is like algebra 1 again. Yeah. If I could remember that, I would. I do not remember. OK. So if you guys go ahead and take a look at this, now it's kind of like what we just did, what I'm asking you guys to do in your quiz next class period, overload. Now you have what? You have like four of them. Fortunately for us, though, by writing this down, you guys can see that these are all in the, fourth, these are all in the first quadrant, right? So it's really not that bad. Um, so the sine of 45 degrees, uh, that's going to be square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is going to be square root of 3 over 2. I'm just doing these in my head. If you guys want to verify using the unit circle, please feel free. Oh, one thing I wanted you to notice. It says cosine of u, u or sorry, v. v is 30, not negative 30. Uh -oh. OK? Because it's u minus v, right? That's the formula, u minus v. You're plugging in v, not negative v. Does that make sense? Well, that's a common mistake. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. And cosine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Does everybody follow me with that? Mm -hmm. That's not it, though, not yet. Well, we've got to simplify. Just got a square root of 2 times square root of 3. We're learning this in our Algebra 2 class. That's square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. OK? Now, that's how the way that the book writes the answer. Actually, they write their answer like this. 
um, they write the answer like this, square root of 6 minus 2 over 4, which is fine. Okay. I want to present you guys with all the other ways. The old book that we used to use used to factor out a common term. What radical could we factor out that they have in common? Square root of what number do these 6 and 2 share? 2. So they, the old book, factored out a square root of 2 and left the answer like this. So they factored out a square root of 2 over 4 and left it like that. I don't know what the answer on the end of the course exam might be, but just realize these are all equivalent to each other. I really don't care which way you guys have it simplified. I think all three of these will be fine for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Any other questions on this? Usually sines and cosines are not too bad. Yes? The plus, plus, minus, minus, how do you know which ones correlate with each other again? Which one's on top and which one's on bottom? Right. We'll do tangent, which will be different than this. So usually, everybody's OK with sines and cosines.